Hey, welcome back to Security Plus Preppers. These are the IT Dojo Security Plus questions of the day. Each and every day I give you two questions to ponder and contemplate. I'm Colin Weaver, let's get right to it. Okay, here comes question number one. Using your Linux computer, you regularly copy files back and forth between other Linux computers. And you're using SCP when you do it. What port are you using when you're doing that? There's the choices. If you need to click pause, do so. If not, here comes the answer. Okay, first one on the list is port 23 using TCP. No, that's Telnet. Next guy on the list is TCP port 514. No, that is RCP and RSH. Next batter up is port 445. No, that is Microsoft file sharing using SMB. Next guy on the list is port 22. Yes, um, SCP actually uses SSH to establish the connection and then do copies, uh, file copies in between it. So that's absolutely the answer that you're looking for. All right, the other two choices on the list are port 21, nope, that's FTP, or at least one of the ports for FTP. And then the last choice you have there is port 990. Port 990 is used for FTPS or FTP over SSL. So 22, port 22, TCP is the port you're looking for for SCP. All right, question number two coming up. You want to enable a stronger security solution for your wireless LAN than WPAPSK, pre-shared keys. Uh, which of the um, enterprise solutions that you see listed over here are going to allow you to have a greater mechanism of authentication and security uh, without requiring you to have to put certificates on all of the individual users' devices? Uh, if you need to, click pause, give those lists a, a ponder. When you're ready, got the answer, click play and we'll break it down. All right, let's talk it through. First item on the list is EAP TTLS. That's EAP Tunneled TLS. Uh, EAP TTLS requires a certificate on the server side. It does not, however, require a certificate on the client side. So that's absolutely one of the answer choices that you're looking for. Uh, the problem that most of us would run into in corporate environments with EAP TTLS is that it's not readily supported by Microsoft right in the operating system. So it's going to require a third-party client in order to be able to go and do that. Now, while that may not be the end of the world for you, um, that's one of the things that's caused it to be a lesser-known protocol to people who live in the Microsoft world than, than people who deal in, a, in, the, in the Apple or, or in the uh, Linux world. Choice number two is EAP MD5. Um, you know, this answer is kind of funky because absolutely not. And let me tell you why. Because first off, EAP MD5 does not require a certificate on the client side. So that might make you go, oh, well, that's a valid answer. Uh, EAP MD5 doesn't require a certificate on the server side either. In fact, EAP MD5 doesn't make use of certificates at all. Uh, EAP MD5 has a lot of problems, particularly as it relates to wireless LANs. Uh, first of which is that it only supports uh, one-way authentication. The client will authenticate himself to the, to the server, or the, or the supplicant will authenticate himself to the authentication server, but not the other way around. The other problem that EAP MD5 has is that it doesn't have any sort of mechanisms that would allow for any kind of key generation to be uh, or to take place after the authentication has occurred. So not only is it susceptible to man in the middle style attacks uh, because of its lack of mutual authentication, it also doesn't support any kind of encryption after the fact. Um, what this means in practical application is that you don't see EAP MD5 really ever being used in wireless LANs. In fact, I don't, can't recall it ever having uh, been seen on any vendor's equipment that I've ever uh, looked at or touched. Uh, you do see it supported in LAN implementations using 802.1x, but uh, even then it's, it's still kind of frowned upon. In fact, EAP MD5 or MD5 as a hashing algorithm in general kind of just has a, has a dismal mood about it these days. And so it's not a good answer here. I mean, it's not because it really doesn't require a certificate on the server side. It's not a good answer because it's not supported in wireless LANs. So it's, it's, it's a very complicated distractor is what it is as far as this question is concerned. Okay, your next choice, EAP TLS. Both sides would have to have a certificate. So uh, this one's not gonna work as an answer. Um, uh, it's, it's probably considered to be, uh, to a lot of people it's considered to be one of the strongest ways of doing uh, EAP because it is purely certificate based on both sides. The server has a certificate and all of the supplicants or all the clients have a certificate as well. Uh, that also makes it one of the more challenging ones to go in and implement because all the clients have to have a certificate. So not the answer that we're looking for here. And then your final choice is protected EAP or PEEP. Uh, absolutely, protected EAP is very popular for a variety of reasons. One of which is that it does not require you to have to have certificates installed on the client side. Only the authentication server or the radius server has to have a certificate. Um, and uh, that greatly simplifies the, the complexities of its implementation. The other reason that protected EAP is so incredibly popular and, and so commonly seen is that it was developed by, I think it was RSA, Intel, and Microsoft. 
Uh, and when you got three heavy hitters in the game like that, it's going to be something that's popular. It's also natively supported in Microsoft in the Microsoft operating system. It's also supported in, in OS X as well as most Linux distributions that I've come across. Um, so it's a wildly popular protocol for that reason. Now, what is interesting about Protected EAP, just as a final side note, is that it only requires a certificate on the server side. It is entirely up to you how you're going to authenticate on the client side within reason. Uh, most of the time, you're going to see MS Chat V2 or a client side certificate being used for authentication. But because MS Chat V2 essentially allows the user to go and use their username and password to authenticate inside an encrypted tunnel, that's the option that a lot of organizations choose to take because it's, it's easier. You know, if you're going to put certificates on both sides, you're back into the complexities of, of dealing with having to have a public infrastructure and all these other things in order to be able to do your wireless LAN solution. And a lot of organizations just aren't set up for that. So, to summarize all that, your answer choice is here in terms of ones that don't require a certificate on the client side and are still viable wireless LAN solutions for enterprise-based scenarios are EAP TTLS and protected EAP. All right, we made it through. Two more questions down. First question was on what uh, TCP port was being used by SCP, the secure copy command, um, on Linux systems. And the second question was on um, what uh, enterprise wireless LAN security solutions don't require you to have to have a certificate on the client side in order to make them work. Um, I hope you found these questions useful for you and the explanation's good. If you did, mash like for me. I do these questions every day, so subscribe if you want to see my pretty face, and I'll see you tomorrow.